In this session, let us understand evaluation. Till now, we have learned the four stages of AI project cycle. They are problem scoping, data acquisition, data exploration, modeling. Now, we will be covering the fifth stage, that is the evaluation stage. In modeling stage, we take into consideration all the algorithms that suit the given project and develop multiple models. Now, in evaluation stage, we are going to explore different methods for evaluating the models that were created and find the one which is best suited based on the various evaluation parameters. So, we define evaluation as the process of understanding the reliability of any AI model based on outputs by feeding the test data set into the model and comparing it with the actual answers. Students, if you remember, we acquire data during the data acquisition stage with which we tried to interpret patterns in the data exploration stage. We also learned that we need to clean and pre-process it during the data exploration stage and then divide the data set into two parts, training data set and testing data set. Now the training data set is what we used in the modeling stage and the testing data set is what we are going to be using in the evaluation stage. Got it? So here we are checking the reliability of the model by feeding in the testing data set and then comparing them with the actual answers. Got it? Now what if we are not utilizing the training data set and testing data set properly? Suppose we take less number of samples for training the model. This is the picture which we are going to arrive at the first one which is called as underfitting. Here we have less number of samples that are used for training. So, the model will not perfectly fit our project. Now, see the second case. Here, we are properly distributing the training data set and testing data set. As a result of which, we are going to arrive at a proper fit. And this is what we call as perfect fit. Now, see the third graph. Here, we are overusing the data set. That is you can imagine you are using almost all the data that we have collected. So, in this case, what is our model going to do? It is going to simply remember every sample that is used for training. Now, in this case, even though it will give 100% accuracy, this is not something that we are looking for because we hardly have any testing data that is left. So, the third graph is what we call as overfitting. Now, you need to keep in mind that we are not going to overfit our AI model by providing maximum number of samples while training the model. Got it? There are various terminologies that come into picture when we are going to evaluate our AI model. Now, let us imagine that we are developing an AI model for predicting forest fires. The objective of the model is to predict whether a forest fire has broken out in the forest or not. For this, we are going to take up two conditions. They are prediction and reality. The prediction is the output of your AI model and the reality is the real scenario in the forest. What is the truth? That is the reality. Now, let us look into various combinations that we have with these two conditions. Now, you see a picture in the background. There is a question, is there forest fire? Now, your model is going to predict with an answer that is yes or no. 
Now let me assume that model is predicting yes. So now this is a positive prediction. Now what is the reality? Are you seeing forest fire in the background? Yes, there is forest fire in the background. Now the prediction is matching with the reality. The model says yes and there is actually forest fire. Now such a condition is called true positive. The prediction is yes, hence positive. The prediction matches the reality, hence it is true. So we call this condition as true positive. Now let's look at the second picture. Here the machine predicts no. That means it is a negative prediction. Can you tell me what is the reality here? Yes, there is no forest fire. So the reality is no. Now here it's a negative prediction but it is matching with the reality. Hence we call this condition as true negative. Easy, isn't it? Let's now look into the third picture. Here there is no forest fire. But the machine is giving a positive prediction by saying yes. But in reality there is no forest fire. Now this is a positive prediction which is not matching with the reality. Hence what is this condition termed as? It is false positive. Got it? Now let's look into the last and final picture. Now here what do we see? There is forest fire. But the machine is predicting no. A negative prediction which is not matching the reality. Hence we call this as false negative. Got it? So we arrive at four different conditions here. True positive wherein the prediction was positive that is yes and it matches with the reality. The second one true negative wherein the prediction was no but that matches with the reality. The third condition false positive wherein the machine predicted it as true and it did not match with the reality. The last condition false negative wherein the machine predicted no and it did not match with the reality. Now taking these four conditions into account, we are going to draw a matrix that is going to be the result of comparison between prediction and reality. We call this matrix as confusion matrix. So this is going to help us to understand the prediction results. Now please note this is not an evaluation metric but just a record which is going to help us calculate various evaluation parameters. Now let us have a look at the confusion metrics. On the left side we have the prediction which could be yes or no. A positive prediction or a negative prediction. So, now on the right side we have the reality. What is the actual truth? Now here again we have yes and no. Now as I said wherever there is yes for prediction we take it as positive prediction and here we find that it is matching with the reality. Hence this is true positive. Now here again this is a positive prediction but it is not matching with the reality hence this is false positive. Now let's go for the negative predictions. The first one in this box. Now this is false negative. It's a negative prediction and the prediction is not matching the reality. The last one true negative. It is a negative prediction but this is matching with the reality. Now we have gone through the various possible combinations of prediction and reality. Let us learn the evaluation parameters. The first parameter is accuracy which is defined as the percentage of 
correct predictions. So for accuracy alone, we calculate it as percentage. Now accuracy percentage is correct predictions divided by total number of cases into 100 because we calculate the percentage. Now what are the correct predictions here? The machine says it's a positive prediction and it matches with the reality. That is your true positive. This is the correct prediction. The same way, true negative, the machine says no and that also matches with the reality. So these are the correct predictions divided by all the positive and negative predictions that we have. That is true positive, true negative, false positive and false negative multiplied by 100, we get the accuracy percentage. Now, do you think this is equivalent to a good performance? No. Higher accuracy does not mean that we have a good performance on predicting a specific label. Now, usually we use confusion matrix for uh, problems related to classification. Let us take the example of forest fire. Now, let us assume that the model always predicts there is no fire. But in reality, there is 2% chance of forest fire. Even though there is 98% accuracy in this case, it is still not useful for the cases where the fire has actually broke out. Hence, we need to look into another parameter that is precision. Now precision is defined as the percentage of true positive cases versus all the cases where prediction is true. So in precision, we are only going to look into the positive prediction. Okay, so we define precision as true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. Now when you calculate this particular value, it usually ranges between 0 to 1. So keep this in mind. When you are calculating precision, you need to use only this formula. Just in case you are asked for precision percentage, then multiply it by 100%, not otherwise. Got it? This cannot be considered as the only parameter for evaluation. Now suppose the prediction of the AI model is predicting 10 positive cases, but in reality there are 20 cases. Do you think this parameter is going to be usable? No. So now we move on to the third parameter, which is recall. Recall is defined as the fraction of positive cases that are correctly identified. So here we are going to be looking into the reality. Now if you consider reality where it says yes in the confusion matrix, we will be looking into true positive and false negative. So we define recall as true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. Here again, you are going to use only this formula. This is going to range between 0 to 1. And if and only if you are asked for a percentage, you will multiply it by 100. Now, we need to decide on which metric is important. Is it precision or is it recall? Let us consider this. Okay. Now, there are high cost associated with false positive and false negative. If I say false negative, the machine says no and in reality it is there. Can you give me some examples of this? Let us take the forest fire itself. Suppose your machine is predicting no, but in reality the forest fire is there and it is spreading very fast. Imagine the amount of land that is going to get destroyed. A lot, isn't it? Now this is going to cost high. 
Now the same way we can think of more examples like the viral outbreak. Now let's consider some examples with high false positive cost. Now the machine is going to predict yes in case of false positive but in reality it is no. Let us take the example of spam filters. Whenever you receive a mail that has to be categorized into your inbox, spam or any other folder that you have created in your email account. What if your AI model starts sending every mail that you receive into spam folder? You will miss out on important mails, isn't it? So this is going to be associated with a high false positive cost. Now if we see high precision and low recall or high recall and low precision. Now in high precision it takes only the positive cases. In high recall it considers only the reality cases. So we need to do something so that it accounts for both the metrics. So to conclude, we arrive at an other parameter that is your F1 score which is calculated as 2 into precision into recall divided by precision plus recall. Now note, this is very important. When you are calculating F1 scores, you are not going to consider the percentage even by mistake. Just take the formulas directly for precision as true positive by true positive plus false positive and for recall as true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. Now once you arrive at the F1 score, you find everywhere for your precision Recall and F1 score, the values are between 0 to 1. Now, an ideal situation would be when you have the value 1 for your F1 score. Now, in that case, your precision and recall also will be 1. That means your model is working 100% perfectly. So, in conclusion, we see that where there is a lower value of precision or recall, the F1 score remains low. If either of them are low, then you find that the value is low. You find a higher value of F1 score only if your precision and recall are both high. I hope you have understood these concepts clearly on evaluation and evaluation parameters. Please do like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.